Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at GTC 2012 in San Jose. I'm here with Samit Gupta. He's the senior director of the Tesla business for the HPC guys at NVIDIA. So Samit, we're here to talk about top 500. And um, you know, it's the, the list is coming up and it seems like it's, it's, it's like a firestorm of press around this one list. Mm -hmm. what, to you, what is the most important thing about the top 500? Well, I think the top 500 is always an indication of what's going to become uh, mainstream computing in a few years. So it's always a very interesting, uh, I think the list is not as important as the uh, machines on the list. In other words, they, they tell you the direction of where high performance computing are, is going. Uh, many times there's, there'll be experimental systems that will not make a long term impact, but you know that's the whole point of having an experiment. I actually believe the, uh, from my, my perspective, the, the uh, really interesting aspect is the next 500. In other words, the list below the top 500, which doesn't exist. But uh, the point is that um, the systems that are going down below the 500 are everywhere. In other words, they're at smaller universities, they're at medium-sized enterprises. Uh, the top 50 in the top 500 list is naturally um, uh, for the rich people. In other words, government-funded labs or very large enterprises. So I think that's why the next 500 is so important because that's really where HPC meets the common man, so to say. So Sure, sure. I mean, I, I, I can correct because a lot of people I talk to, they think, well, the top 50 is all that's interesting because that's where it gets really hard mm -hmm. and expensive, right? right? right. So this, this uh, you know, top uh, 1,000, as you say, it, is that, you think, a reflection that it, it, it's getting less hard to do parallel computing? I think it's getting less hard to achieve good performance. Uh, you know, just 10, 12 years ago, a teraflop was the number one supercomputer. The new Kepler GPUs we announced, one of them is a teraflop. So your PC would have been the number one supercomputer 12 years ago, right? So I think um, the tough 50 is always, I think the top, I, I'm going to even narrow it down, the top 10, the, the top, top 10. 15 uh, are really hard, very expensive, uh, and it's interesting to see, you know, the K supercomputer cost roughly a billion dollars, right? And that that was just the cost of the machine, it doesn't include the cost of the facilities. Uh, Subame, which is also in the top five, cost uh, less than 50 million, right? So there's this, and, and th uh, there's this huge discrepancy between trying to get to the 10 petaflop which K did in, with a custom uh, CPU versus using, I would say, standard server parts, standard CPUs, standard GPUs, standard servers, and being able to do it in a very energy efficient way. Mm -hmm. So, maybe not this list, but uh, coming up soon, we're gonna see some 10, 20 petaflop machines like uh, uh, the Blue Otters that are hybrid, powered by NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, what do you think the lessons we're going to learn from that extreme hyperscale kind of system that's going to trickle down to that 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 top 1,000 as we're talking? I think one of the uh, one of the most important things about building out these large systems is programmability, is software scaling, right? Uh, network effects, right? Of, of these really large uh, hyperscale, as you call them, uh, systems. Um, those are the th things that we have to learn by building these large systems. I was with some of our, um, you know, some of the Chinese uh, folks who are, uh, I should say, some of the participants from China who are at GTC yesterday, and I was talking to some of the press, and they were asking me, uh, do you think China is going in the right direction? And I said, well, you know, I think they, if you don't build it, they won't come. And China took the attitude of, let's build a large machine, let's fund a lot of scientists, and then they will, uh, the utilization of these machines will increase. Uh, you know, you don't overnight go from not knowing HPC to being 100% utilized on a petaflop system. It takes time. And in the same way, Blue Waters, Titan, um, we, it'll take us time to fully utilize those 10 petaflop, 20 petaflop systems, right? And, and you, uh, if you don't build it, you can't get there, right? right? right, right. So, so looking forward, I guess kind of a wrap up, you know, uh, 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 Kepler and, and you guys are very public with your roadmap where where you're headed. So what advancements are we going to see between Kepler and whatever comes next? It, it, does it, is it static or is it is it more of a software story that gets better as you go along? What do you um, think? Well, you'll find out. 
you know, I think we have now shown everyone that we always have a few surprises up our sleeves. Kepler is a surprise to most people. Uh, most people expected us to be 1.5 to 2x faster. Uh, we are 3x faster, right? 3x higher performance. Uh, people didn't expect the features in Kepler that we put in. For example, the ability of the GPU to uh, create work for itself and, and continue to work uh, autonomously. Uh, all these are the kind of things we're always thinking about, right? We have some of the best architects in the world. We, we designed some of the most complex uh, chips in the world. And, uh, you know, so we have surprises up our sleeve and Maxwell's gonna be even more cool.